Today I'll be working on the side panels and I think that's the most complicated part of the whole build. Hello and welcome back to the third episode of my cockpit build project. In the last episode I built the basic structure for the front panels and if you haven't yet seen it go and check it out because I will go through some of the basic basic methods, methods and techniques I'm going to use in this episode too. Today I'll be working on the side panels and I think that's the most complicated part of the whole build. But at the same time I actually have quite a few interesting ideas how I can make it work with the hoses and hotas so I can change between them quite fast and also a few other ideas regarding the modularity of the setup. Before I'm going to start with today's build I'm going to cut out some triangles. The design for angled side panels calls for some supporting triangles with sides of 75 and 150 millimeters. And let's say if I had squares cut to the stat size, so this is a bit bigger but just going to show you that. So let's say that this was 150 and this was 75 millimeters. If I would cut it right from the center, I would actually end up two smaller pieces because the blade is to the three millimeters thick. On the other hand, if I would make it, make it so that only one piece would be right size, then I would have a lot of extra scrap parts. But in, in this case, I'm actually going to use those scrap parts again to make sure that everything is squared inside the side cabinets. So that's what I'm starting with now. I have the 75 millimeter piece of plywood. So since I need to cut several 150 millimeter pieces, I'm just going to add this top to the right place and I can just cut those one after another quite easily. And when I'm done with that, I'm just going to cut them to the right angle so that half of the pieces will be for the, for the angle side panels and half of the pieces will be just kind of general support for this cabinet. With a bunch of these scrap pieces as corner supports for the future, I can start working with the actual cabinets. I'm going to start from the top and bottom plates and this is basically just doing the same, same cut four times. Again, the basic things. I'm going to start by carefully marking the place, place where I want to cut and then cut 450 millimeters white sheet. This is because I'm going to sink it at least to the sides a bit. So the extra five millimeters for that one. And after that, just cutting it and then cutting the smaller pieces and doing this four times. And once I have the four pieces, I'm also going to cut the corners. And this is the reason why I usually double check everything. This corner should be exactly 45 degrees. But if I'm using my carpenter square here, that's exactly 45 degrees. There is actually quite big change. So this just means that I will have to double check my measurements and do it again until I just get it right. This time the issue was that I actually had measured 250 millimeters to here instead of 255 that it was supposed to be. I don't know why but this is the reason that it's good to double check your measurements always and in case of corners use some other measuring devices for example in this case this carpenter square. But now it's checked up checked out exactly. It's looking pretty good. So now I'll just have to put the track in place and make the cut. And now I'm happy with the first one so I'm just going to use it as a template for the rest one to make it go a bit faster. All four pieces are cut and I also selected two of the best ones to be the top ones. So this is the top right and that's the top left. And while I was at it I also pre-cut one piece because assembly and this this is something the track always takes a while, so now I have the long cut made for my next part. Okay, in my designs, I have the angled side panels basically on the side, and I'm going to need these triangles to support them. I'm going to add this, this so that there's always 200 millimeters between the center of the tri triangle. But since I'm going to install some of my 3D printed panels on on top of this setup. It makes sense to pre-cut some holes here before I'm going to assemble anything since it's going to be again much easier to, to do it now. Okay, and the design I selected for this one was that, that it's going to end here. So I'm not going to add the angle panels here and here because that would be just basically behind my back. It would be unnecessary comp complex work so I'm going to make, it, make the simpler version here. So now I'm just going to draw the places for, the, for these supports here and then going to mark the places where I'm going to cut that, cut those pieces away. And when I'm done with it, I'm just going to 
basically pre-drill the holes again and I am going to drill these holes by hand because for first reason is that my drill press isn't just big enough so I wouldn't even able to be able to drill the holes in the center and the second reason is that it really doesn't matter that much it would take unnecessary time since this is going to be covered with the that angle panels so what I'm going to do here now is just pre-drill the holes first and then by using Fosner bits start drilling a bit bigger holes and I'm going to start by drilling from the back side and then going the rest of the way from the front side because that way I can avoid unnecessary tearing while this is still under underneath and it wouldn't be visible I still want that that sort of stuff here and when I'm done with that I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut the pieces off and the jigsaw is perfect, perfectly fine for this use because these are going to be under the panel so now that I have these holes in place I'm also going to cut a groove here. This is something that has to do with my plan to make make it easy to change between hoses and hotas. This is the left side piece so I'm just going to cut a groove here that's wide enough to accommodate basically any throttles and it will be also quite long. But I'm actually going to do this on both sides and when I have this thing assembled I can go I can show you that what's what's the point with this this setup and how it's going to help me actually make this a bit more modular modular setup and this is going to be a bit more challenging piece to cut away since this there wasn't won't be anything covering this part so this actually needs to look good so what I have to do here now is just basically mark this place and cut the center off and that like I said that's uh, that's going to be a bit more challenging but I'm planning to use my track so to cut basically as big part as I actually dare to cut away from here and then for the rest of the stuff just going to use a hand saw to f finish it. Okay so I ended up using a jigsaw here just much, much faster and the end result is actually really nice. So these are done now next step uh, is just the basic cutting stuff so I'll have to cut the outside and inside panels panels for this one and when I have all the pieces cut then I also need to angle angle the few edges that there are so I'm going to I can have this corner here properly made. Okay so there's nothing nothing really special it's just basic basic cutting stuff with my track saw work here that's going on. And once once everything has been cut to the right size I'll just have to carefully cut the edges. Okay now that I have this other side cut to the right angle so it can make the small corner at the end. I'm just going to make one small detail for the side panel for the side cabinet and I'm just going to angle ever so slightly the front front corner here. It's just kind of the small details that that you don't see it that often but you're still going to see it occasionally and also what I'm doing here is the same thing that I, I did with the front panels is that I'm I'm going to cut the cut the grooves or dados or rabbits whatever it is it is here at at the out, outside edge so I can actually fit the fit part of the top and bottom panels inside the sides so it will be again much much better joint joint in that case. Again some more challenges. This rabbit was supposed to be 21 millimeters width of the plywood but for some reason it's a couple of millimeters wider and just something that again a small mistake that I made while measuring and didn't double check my measurements. I think again working for, for the day I'm starting to be quite tired and making these stupid mistakes but okay so how can I fix this one? I'm just going to basically install it a bit farther away from the side and if necessary add some filler inside it still should be strong enough joint after all work with the rabbits or dados or whatever they are uh, i think these parts are finally ready for assembly i'm still missing the inner panels and since i need to start cutting my last plywood sheet i need to figure out something there but for now i'm going to start assembling what i have here and basically what i'm doing here first just lots of pocket holes to drill so I'm just going to drill the pocket holes to these and then to the corner pieces that I had have that I'm using just to square square everything off and once I have pocket holes wherever I need them to have I'm start assembling these cabinets so what I'm just going to do I'm going to put the bottom and top plates to the grooves that I have here 
before that add some glue and then screw them in with the pocket, pocket hole screws. And after everything is in place I'm just going to add the small extra triangles that I have just to keep everything in place and make sure everything stays squared. And one of the interesting challenges here is the basically the corner that I have here so once I have the bigger plates in place then I'll, it's time to start adding the adding the corner corner pieces and that's a bit more of a challenge. Uh, I guess those last few time lapses of me cutting the grooves to the pieces and putting everything together were actually one of most of time consuming parts of this build so far. And I lost my cutting table since this is the last sheet of plywood. I don't have anything to support it so I had to basically rearrange everything here. I guess at some point I need to make dedicated cutting table or saw horses and a plywood top that I can assemble when I need to cut some sheet goods here. But at the same time I get a chance to assemble everything and see how, how they would look together and it's, it's quite nice. Next step, the inside panels. So just cutting the right size pieces and putting them together. Okay, after a quick fitting I, I could say that it fits like a glove or the finish equivalent of the proverb fits like a fist in the eye. I think I'm going to cut an axis hatch here. It will be something like this size. I'm going to cut it away with the track saw and finish with the trick saw. And afterwards I'm also going to add some supports behind this. Just to, just to make it so that I can keep the axis hatch in place. Most likely I'm going to use something like magnets, magnets or something like that. And after I have made the hole here. Next thing I need to do is just attach it to its place. Since, since the joint itself isn't going to hold any weight, I'm just taking a quicker approach now that I, ha I have a working nail gun. I'm just adding some glue and nails. Okay, a small thing that I didn't think through here. I cut these two pieces basically identical instead of them the being mirrors. mirrors. So on that side I have a better surface outside and on this side I have the worst surface outside. Not a big issue but might have to spend some extra time with this when I'm finishing this. I guess now it's also a good moment to fill in the pocket holes so the glue may dry a bit. I'm using these basic dowels. They're not meant to fill in those holes and they won't be perfect but in any case I need to use wood filler with this so I can fill in all the extra gaps there might be with the wood filler but this will just make it much easier. Now that these things have dried I can just take my or I, I think this is some kind of multi-tool and just cut the extra parts off. <laughs> well after that small sidetrack here it's back to the working with the side cabinets as is the theme of the video. Next I'm making the insides for this hole here and I'm going to make basically the innards a bit more wider than this gap here is so I can route the cables outside here. I'm going to cut the right size pieces from the plywood I guess this is one of the satisfactory moments in woodworking, at least for me, is when you have two pieces that you have made by measuring them, but they're perfectly identical. But at the same time, I noticed I screwed up again. Just a moment ago, go, I was describing you that I would make these things wider than the gap is, but I didn't do it because, well, that's how my work, head works. But in any case, I'm just going to go with this one. It's, it'll be good enough. And then I'm drilling the pocket holes, assembling it, and then attaching it to the place with some help, with some glue and few pocket holes. I'm also adding ends here. They don't have to be that sturdy, but they still add some rigidity to the system here. What I'm going to do with the ends is that part of them I'm attaching with the pocket holes, just because I there isn't anything anything else how, that I would use. Okay, what I'm doing with the ends, I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible so I'm attaching them with uh, some glue and nail gun and I don't mind few nail holes here because like I mentioned uh, many times I'm still going to use a lot of wood filler so it's just easy to pluck them. Well I guess that assembly could have used some preliminary planning but it's done and I guess it's time for me to explain my logic with these grooves here while sitting on my Drake style seat. So let's say that I have been playing Star Citizen, I have this my this joystick stand in here with hoses set up and I want to convert this whole setup to holders. Basically what I'm going to do is first thing is I'm going to unscrew this away and they take the joystick off. Then I have my throttle here, it's a bit farther back but it's still usable. I can just push it back in and now I actually have 
perfectly working hota setup and when it comes to the comes to this space here i can just have some covers on top of the empty, empty space so it will be look nicer and there's more more usable space for stuff like snacks and naturally i'm going to add cup holders that's always important but i also decided to add the groove on the right side because it might come in handy for example let's say I want to play DC at, at some point and I have my fav favorite plane there. I might actually create a plane specific console here. Not exact copy, but with kind of closed one, close to the original with most important controls. I can just drop it in here if I want to play DCS and grab it away and change it to something else if I want to play Star Citizen. And I can actually make those modules pretty ready so they can they could even contain like let's say Arduino or Leo Botner chip inside and a connection for the light so I just need to add the wires drop the console in and I'm ready ready to play different games so there are a few more things to do before I, I can say that these cabinets are finished I am going to add some extra stuff like the colors around those access hatches so I can press the hats at those then I'm going to add kind of the double thick wall here where the joystick is going to be since I have the joystick stand attached inside and I want I want there to be a bit more wood than just the 21 millimeters of plywood. And one last thing, the extra vertical supports that I'm adding in the middle. For them I'm just going to use whatever random stuff I can find that I have available because it will be inside so it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same everywhere. And then, then just cut it to pieces with this thing. After quite a few hours of work, I would say that the side cabinets are finally ready for now. There's naturally a lot of work to do, but for now I'm satisfied with those. The insides are easily accessible, and naturally I'm not going to add anything to the end because it's not visible. But at the same time, it is a really sturdy structure. The access hatch works nicely. Whenever I take the chair off, I can take the hatch away and access the inside, at least for some small scale stuff. And if there's anything bigger, then I can take the whole cabinet away and access everything even better. So even though the basic structures are ready, this is far from finished. For next episode, I'm going to start working with the angled side panels, creams and all the small details. So if you want to see where this continues, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.